Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this, a brand new day. I am recording this on Saturday morning. It is a little bit after 8 a.m. Oh boy, insomnia, change in seasons, and who knows what else. I'm finding motivation much more difficult in morning times. But it could be part of something else. My tolerance on a lot of things seems to be falling. And, and that's good because things have been sky high for way too many years. So the fact that my tolerance appears to be falling for some things, good thing. My body is recovering from, from all those things, and that's good. Also, there was the anesthesiologist when I had my colonoscopy. They, too, you know, it was a guy, and they had ADHD, and we were talking about that. And I mentioned, you know, yeah, I take caffeine and my Ritalin, and it helps me sleep. But, yeah, they, he finds the exact same thing. So, yeah, Ritalin slows me down so I can sleep. <laughs> Thumbs up for that. <clears throat> and, of course... I would like to front load the video. Yay, YouTube. So if you could interact with YouTube algorithms and toss me a like if you like what you see in here. If you could also subscribe to the channel, that would be very cool. You know, thumbs up for that. And of course, I would like to thank my Patreon.com patrons, these beautiful and awesome people that help keep me alive. Literally, I am on a limited income disability. I cannot work. I broke my back. Not literally, but with all the nerve injuries and the state of my back before I even started working working. Oi, I cannot work. And with my limited disability all primarily going to my rent, these people help to keep me alive. If you could help me out, that would be awesome. If you don't want to, that's fine too. But links are in the show more where our you know, video description, wherever that happens to be. So yay, front loading of videos. <coughs> cool. <laughs> But yes, we talked about caffeine use and how much I used and how much they use and how Ritalin, yeah, it puts us to sleep because our brains are working properly. So thumbs up for that. But it was, it was a good talk. It's nice to meet other people that have some of the same issues you do. So thumbs up on that. Uh, this one is kind of funny and kind of horrific too because I almost got killed the other day. And it's kind of funny ironic. Because I had been walking and thinking about, you know, the whole inside-outside creativity thing about how it is dangerous. It is dangerous. You know, even on the inside, even in a civilized area like the Crimson Kingdom, in the top 10 areas of, you know, top 10 things that kill people, you know, being eaten is usually bumping up into number 10 about half the year because it's dangerous it's a, it is an eternal untamable frontier so there you can't tame it there's always going to be danger your risk of being eaten is very very low but always present but i was thinking about that and how it's you know yeah it's, it's a small thing but take a look it's like just because it's on the top 10 list doesn't mean it's going to happen. Automobile accidents and drunk driving in the United States. Just drunk driving alone kills more people every single year than we lost during the entire Vietnam War. And then you throw the other accidents on top of that. That's a lot of people dying every year just by cars. Do we stop driving? No. Have I been killed by a car in a car accident or by a drunk driver or hit by a car? No, and I just turned 59. And so there's no guarantee that that's gonna happen. On the other hand, I was walking halfway across the street. There had been nobody coming. There was no reason for me to stop because I was like five seconds into the crosswalk and there was nobody there. And then from out of the road, coming right at me at 20 miles an hour, and thank God they saw me, because they went from 20 in the middle of their turn to managing to stop about this far away from me while I did my best to jump back once I was aware of them. If they hadn't slowed down, I would have been aware of them when they hit me. So if they hadn't suddenly been paying attention, midway through their turn where they had not been paying attention two three nights ago 
I'd be either dead or probably still in the hospital from all the broken bones and internal damage. And I had been thinking that night, you know, just earlier, and it made me laugh even in the midst of, oh my god, that, yeah, I had been thinking, yeah, you know, I haven't been killed by a car accident, and I'm 59, and then just less than an hour later, I'm almost killed in an automobile thing. <sighs> Unfortunately, while that one is the closest that I have come, uh, about three times a year, there are situations where it's been me moving really fast that I'm not dead from going out on walkies. So if I, I really have to keep my eyes open, because literally there have been times where if I had not been moving, I would not be here. So, yay. <laughs> <sighs> but past that, other than almost getting killed the other night during walkies, I'm trying to do the best that I can with everything. I, with my motivation, sometimes not so good. Yesterday I was thinking I'd like to try and get something recorded, but I've also, went, because my tolerance going down on things, this is my pain medication. And my tolerance for my pain medication has been coming down too. So I am becoming quite affected at times when I can move and do things. I don't get a, a really wonderful feeling. I still have just the vague feeling of goodwill, but I find it really difficult to concentrate and I get really sleepy. And if I really tank up to clear up on pain, I might be falling asleep. So, yay. But I've been trying to do the best that I can here in just existing, you know, getting up, doing things. I tried to drink as much fluid as I could yesterday, but I still seemed really, really dehydrated. I was not urinating anywhere near as much as I normally do. Man, but I don't know. I don't want to go TMI on that. Everybody urinates, and in fact, your body, under good conditions, your kidneys produce one ounce of urine per hour. You know, so if you do not have to empty a very full bladder every eight hours at minimum, you are not drinking enough. That's a bare minimum to keep your kidneys happy. So you need to drink enough to produce at least that ounce every hour. And once you hit the 150 cc mark in your bladder, that's when your bladder starts sending signals to your brain that, yeah, hey, 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 you need to take care of this. So it ain't much. It's about three ounces. Your, your bladder starts sending those signals to the brain that we need to go get emptied. And you should be doing that. And I wasn't getting those signals from my brain. So I need to keep drinking more. I was too dehydrated like I had to be for my colonoscopy and I'm still too dry now so I've been trying but oy vey. <laughs> Past that just been thinking. I do most of my thinking while I'm on walkies so I did some thinking and stuff and I do want to do now more talking about the inside, whole inside outside situation because there's a lot of stuff about the King and Crimson that I do want to mention and then try to end up with something that ties into the whole book sort of thing that I've been working on. But the King in Crimson, like I have mentioned, very ethical, very moral being. To the point, since life is different on the inside than it is on the outside, to the point that someone from the inside manages to be talking with the King in Crimson and does that, you know, big trolley problem thing. You know, you got five people here, one people here, and the trolley's going to hit five people. What do you do? Do you push this one person in to stop that? You know, who? Do you, your decision. Do you let the five people die or do you kill one so that the five can live? And that just blows the king in crimson's mind for a short time short circuits them basically it's like ah they'd never thought of things like that before because when they look at that their first impression is remember i'm not 
human. I'm not, I'm not human. I am human. I'm not non-human. I'm not higher than human intelligence. I don't think like a non-human that happens to like humanity. I am humanity. So trying to think like the King and Crimson is a challenge, but I figure their first response is I will not answer this the way it is presented. This is a false binary. There are more options than just these two. No one has to die. And if you are telling me that we are in a system where people have to die, then instead of choosing who dies, you change the system. You don't just decide who dies today. Because with their head here, they're pres they see the analogy. They see the metaphor. This isn't just a trolley problem. This is a, well, how do we keep people alive in the world today with things continuing the way they are? Do, do we sacrifice these people to save these people? Or do we just let things happen and then these people die? So isn't it better to... What? No, false binary. There are other options. And if you are in a system where the only options are that false binary where somebody has to die, then the system is broken. You don't keep using a broken system. You especially do not decide on a day-by-day -day basis who has to die today so that we can maintain the status quo of the broken system. And then who must I choose tomorrow to die so the system continues and the day after and the day after. For the King and Crimson, this binary option is just thoroughly abhorrent and horrific. And when they finally put it together, looking at this problem that they've been given by the person from the outside, looking at the person who lives on the outside, again, they are just momentarily shocked and horrified that this false binary, these broken systems, this sacrificing of those that shouldn't be sacrificed to maintain the status quo of those with more that we live under this on a day-by-day -day basis just makes the Crimson King have a major revelation and a thorough upheaval of what little they knew and what little they uh, thought about the outside. Because if we out here have internalized and normalized this horrific binary, we're on a day-by-day -day basis, which of the trod upon should die so that we can maintain the status quo of those more privileged to be less inconvenienced? They are horrified by those implications. So that's one big moral thing about the, the King and Crimson. And the other, of course, is they want their wonderful, beautiful machine, their civilization that they are building to survive and last as long as possible after they go. As a sort of monument, as a sort of posterity, but not so much to them. They just want it con to continue because people's lives are objectively better. Every generation has been a little bit better than the previous generations, and they are very proud of that. It would be nice if that machine could keep running after they're gone. And I figure one of the last interactions we see with the King in Crimson, in the context of this book and the little slice of life stories, the King in Crimson is talking to somebody about what they fear about the future. And normally, you know, their face, the mask that they wear over their face is an exaggerated emotional response to something. So if they're smiling, it is a wild grin. If they're sad, it is super exaggerated. 
the mask when they're saying the next thing is super exaggerated, but you can see between, you know, you look in the holes of the mask and around the eyes, the skin is tight and you see the mouth after done speaking, after done speaking, after they're done speaking, the lips are pursed tight and they just look pale and like the words that they have just spoken are physically hurting them because the last thing that they say are something along the lines of it would be a terrible shame and horribly ironic if after I pass it all falls apart into bloodshed endless wars of succession and one bloody coup after one bloody coup forever less than a day after my passing. What a shame. I couldn't see that irony. And just the look on their face that you can see under the exaggerated smile of the mask is just the possibility of all those dreams turning to ashes in their mouth. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments my community tab, and I'm going to go through and thank however many people have left me comments, up to 25, though I have not had 25 in quite some time, but anything more than zero is awesome. Thank you so very, very much. If I mispronounce a username, no disrespect is intended. I am I'm bonking into my pop shield. I am an American English speaker, and uh, let's see. <laughs> yes, as you see, my memory has failure limits right there. If I forget things, so who knows what goes on, but... I would like to thank Green Room, thumbs up and thank you. And then I am not going to be able to pronounce this properly, but there's S H O R O U Q T A H A T A H R A O U I. Thumbs up and thank you. Larry from Space, greatly appreciated. Confused Owl 29, thumbs up and good to see you. Chloe Smith, thumbs up. And then there is Pong, thumbs up. Monica Lynn, greatly appreciated. We have Trevor. And then there's G O R. N-I-C-Z, thumbs up and thank you. Sebastian Ferris, always good to see you. Consbo Lopez, good to see you in the comments as well. Thumbs up and thank you. There is Vilma, thumbs up. Coco's, greatly appreciate. We have Trevor, thank you very, very much. And good to, good to see nice people in the comments. Everybody's nice, primarily. There are a few that aren't, but most are. Jocelyn William, enchiladas can be good. There is Ben B, thumbs up and thank you. Marie Tanya, Thumbs up and thank you much. That I don't know if I'm counting properly now or not. <laughs> Craig, Craig YAC, thumbs up and thank you. And then there's Brian Glenn, thumbs up. And Yuki likes hot potatoes. Greatly appreciated. Each and every one of you, however many of you there were, since I kind of got lost in my counting. It is appreciated. Each and every one of you. You get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people. If only in text, and if only for a short time. And it is appreciated. Thumbs up. And of course, I don't know what device you're watching this on, but somewhere in the video description, there are links to all of my channels. If you could check that out, that would be cool. And there are links to things like my Twitter, Facebook, Patreon. And again, I would like to thank all of my Patreon.com patrons. These beautiful and awesome people literally make it possible for me to eat and my pets to be alive. I really need pet food and like hamster bedding and stuff. If you could check out my Amazon wish list, that would be awesome. But again, I'd like to thank these people and sorry about the little break there. Thank you so very much. If you'd like to help me out without being a patron, I do have a PayPal link and I'm not above grubbing for your spare cash because when you're so close to having nothing, anything helps. And of course, as I mentioned, I got that Amazon wish list link where out of order, I talked about my, my need for stuff. There should be things on there. So if you could check it out, that would be cool. Now, of course, do not feel obligated. I do not feel entitled. And if you cannot or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. And if you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation you get from my existence. And of course, if you did the notification bell on the subscription button, that'd be very cool. Thank you very much. And of course, you want to seek creativity, positivity, and stay balanced. Moderation in all things. Possibly more boring, definitely more healthy though. And of course, you know the drill. You know how to stay safe with the Kofete bug still raging and a plague on the unvaxxed. You know what to do to be smart and safe. Please do it. 
So, until we meet again, which will, you know, hopefully be soon. <laughs> you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. Well, and quite frankly, I think that's a good thing.